Welcome back again, Blade Lovers. This old sword with you, of course. I've been meaning to make and had promised to make some collection videos back quite a while ago. And uh might have made one or two since that promise, but uh, I want to continue along that trend. And so here we are. And we had the mic a little close to the chin there, so if you picked up some noise, my apologies. So, um, we're all settled in now. Don't worry. <laughs> Who is that man behind the curtain, right? Well, it's me. So, what's the category here? I looked back, this is early November, this is November 5th, okay, that this is being recorded. And uh, I looked back the last month because I'd picked up quite a few interesting impressive budget knives so I thought well why not call it the kind of the October collection you know so these are all knives that were uh, picked up and uh, for most of them uh, they were reviewed in October they're ones that impressed me they continue to impress me and you're gonna find they're a little on the larger side and those are the size knives that I like. I'd say the shortest one's three and a half inches, but they're all heavyweights in their own right. So I'm going to start right in with a purchase I made from Dam Designs directly from their website. And uh, this was right after the Blade Show West, and I just decided to go out to, I think I followed an Instagram link and ended up at the Dam Designs website. And after not being able to find anything for a long time, a long dry spell, there were a whole bunch of knives you could buy. So here is the yokai. Love it. It's just so unusual. And, you know, I'm not going to go over specs and measurements and all of that in this video where it's going to be three hours long. So... If I can keep it under 20 minutes, I'm doing good with, uh, what do we have here? Uh, seven knives, right? What do I like about this knife? I like the size. I like the girth. I like the ergos in the hand. I like the fact that the clip is, switches to the left side of the knife for you left-handers, even though I'm a left-hander that uses his knives in the right hand for the most part beautiful uh, stone wash kind of acid etch really on the uh, blade but it's smooth get the same kind of treatment on the pivots the pivots are that unique damn design uh, what would it be a hexagonal got a hole for a lanyard gotta have that and um, pretty much wide open construction oh, that's because I'm looking through the camera we got a black backspacer. I picked this one up specifically to have it in white G10. Thought that was unusual. Only got one or two knives in white G10, and I think for the most part they're uh, Max Ace. Really interesting Tonto design. Nice thumb ramp. Very grabby very useful knife and can't say that about all Tontos although you do have two points on a Tonto and you can use them both you know and it's still kinda stabby which I like you know harpoon so that is the damn designs Hokai nice deep carry clip by the way and that clip is also in the same grayed out kind of uh, stonewashed finish. Next up, Kubi KU322. This was one that um, I saw a lot of people liking on uh, Instagram. Hadn't seen too many videos on it on YouTube. Came out uh, in October. Deep carry clip. It is a big knife very close to uh, the Beluga from uh, Petrified Fish in the way the uh, 
you got that nice deep belly blade high grind. This one is either a flipper or a finger hole opener if I can do it. There we go, I can do it with a thumb. I love it because it's in Jade G10. I happen to like that. When it's contrasted with black, you got a lot of weight relieving inside. It's a light, useful knife. Got a bit of a finger choil there, which if you stay back a little is useful. Just, this would make a great EDC knife. And you can certainly get it in a wide array of handle colors and blades. This one, I believe, came from Amazon. Good source for Kubi. Along with White Mountain, of course. Here is the Best Tech Operator. Just a real solid, beefy knife with that mean worn cliff. Big old hole. I mean, I think I showed this before. You can almost put your whole pinky through the hole. It's so large. So that means you can roll it out easily. You can certainly finger flick it open if you don't lose your finger inside the hole there. And you got the back flipper. It's kind of a heavyweight knife, although it does offer, I believe, some weight relieving inside. Um, very little, actually. Smaller holes. A little heavier knife than the KU-322. Lanyard hole. Deep carry clip on one side only, unfortunately. And this is a knife that feels so much better in the hand than it might look in pictures. And you got an excellent point down thumb ramp when you're holding it in that position. Okay, so that's the best tech operator. And these all come in, I don't think, any more than 60. So if that's in your budget threshold, I'd say 50 to 60 bucks for these. And um, here is one that, when I got it in the frame lock, didn't care too much for the detent on it, which was so strong. And that one came in a D2 blade. Uh, this one from Willemson is called the Chibs, and it's in Sandvik, as you can boldly see, 14C28N. It's just uh, everything that that f frame lock should be, and uh, I think came in around 60, 65. You can check out the price at White Mountain. I'm going to do my best to put links to all of these blades in the video. That's challenging sometimes. Lots of look up. This one also only a right hand carry but with a very high clip there that should be easy to get in and out of thicker pants. A pronounced pommel with a uh, lanyard hole in it. And this really rugged kind of jimped beaded backspacer. And I believe that's steel. Yep, that is steel. Neat knife. Finger flick it open easily. Much better than the original. Thumb open it. It's just got a great action on it. And they got this 3D milled G10 which has all of these grooves going diagonally. It's very cool. Uh, so by the way, I didn't mention the steel on these knives previously. The Yokai is um, going to be, although it's not marked, yes it is marked. That's from Sandvik 14C. The Kubi is um, D2. And I believe the operator is D2. Yep. So those are your steels. Now, more recently, the Valona from Migaron Knives. This was a real surprise to everybody. 4.22 inch blade. I remember that number. <laughs> and um, it is in uh, DC 53 steel, which is a fine grained D2. 
uh, look that up on knife steel compositions uh, or any other source. It's got kind of a uh, stacked G10 grip that's relieved from the aligner. I believe uh, they call that kind of a, what do they call that? Window box, something box, shadow box, shadow box. I heard one person say. Um, jimping, not real effective, but you got a beautiful crowned spine on this and a useful fuller that allows you, when your hands work right, to uh, flick it out with the middle finger. Uh, thin profile, backspacer. Um, clip on this is not switchable. It's a titanium clip. Just a real good size. Look at all of that left over on the handle. Mungus handle. And you get a lot of blade. Blade to handle ratio. Pretty nice. And yet, your finger's not going to pick that up because that point's buried down in there. Fidgety knife. Beautiful. Comes through with a drop shut action. Really, really excellent. Now we get down to the last two, and I got to look at my crib notes because both the Tucson there on the left and the Petrified Fish use only numbers, to the best of my knowledge. So the Tucson is the TS-159, and the Petrified Fish is the PF-929. So if I don't mention those numbers again, remember them. <laughs> Here's the solid petrified fish. Reminds me so much of the operator. A little different blade profile, more pointy, more of a clip than a um, Warncliffe. Handles are the same color, both have the hole. Just slightly different in the size of the hole and the shape of the blade. Handle ergos are uh, fairly similar, except we got kind of a double choil here on the petrified fish. This is from D2. This is in their $35 price point. But these knives are so well made for the money. Really incredible. Look at that nice um, satin finish on the blade grind. Very high grind very sharp edge. There's your nice petrified fish logo. And a deep carry clip that is once again not switchable. So the higher end of the petrified fish knives use K110. The lower end in the $35 range use D2. So their higher range, believe it or not, is really only $55. And the Warrior and the Beluga are amongst my favorite in that line. But I'm sticking with knives that came in in October, so that's what i got to do. Here is the Tucson. And um, I said you're supposed to remember the numbers. And I'm going to look it up again because it is the 159. 3.9 inch blade. Designed by Wong, very prolific designer for um, Tucson. It is also Sandvik 14C28N. That's the new budget steel, I think, because it's stainless, unlike D2, which is sort of on the borderline of being stainless. But if you take care of your D2 and put a little silicone cloth to it now and then, a little bit of oil, you're usually fine. This handle material is quite unusual. I don't know what to call it. It looks like a micarta. It looks like a uh, G10. Kind of a burlap um, fiber to it. And I think um, when Jelly Jerry designed that knife for, I believe it was Kubi. And I can't recall the name right now. It had exactly that same 
material on it. And darn if I can remember the name of it. I'm sure you can look it up. Beautiful Persian inspired blade. Long with just enough curve. Just enough upsweep. Trailing point style blade. And we have once again a clip that is only on the right side unfortunately. But it is a deep carry spring clip from steel. And those clips have worked out quite well on the two sun knives. Very light weight. Nice and weight relieved inside. And the action just amazing. Pretty much drop shut. So there you have, and that by the way is a $50 knife for all of that that you get. That is my October budget collection of flippers. I'm going to see if I can squeeze them all in here. And let's put the operator over on the left. I think they'll all fit. There you go. So best tech operator. Kubi K, uh, TS-159, um, Petrified Fish 939, something like that, and the Willemson Chibs, the uh, Bellona by Migaron, the Yokai by Dam Designs, and the KU-322 by Kubi. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you had a great October, and I hope you have an even better November. If you're in the Northeast, it's going to be cold, what can I say? Be well, take care, don't forget to like this video, and subscribe.